We've all lost so much, and Mia has lost so much. Over 40 years. You heard what Mia talk just now. And as Mia spoke, he spoke about Louisville. Lynn talked about the thousands of pieces that Mumia has written. They're not about him. Mm. Mumia's written a whole stack of books. Ain't one of them about him. Mumia does this work for the people. He does this work so that we get free. And we reciprocate that love and that struggle by battling to make sure that Mumia Abu Jamal makes it back home. Right. And the state, the state has done every single thing that it can do to stop. We talk about Palestine, I wrote a book except for Palestine. We can write a book except for Mumia. First Amendment says you have a right to free speech and free association. Except for Mumia, whose words as a 16-year-old were used as evidence to try to convict and execute him. They said that judges have to be impartial, but Judge Sabo was an undersheriff and a former member of the FOP. Except for Mumia, they say that you're supposed to have a jury of peers, and yet jurors were excluded based on race. They say that you're supposed to be impartial, but two of them say that they didn't think they could be impartial because one of them was running to a cop and said they were shot. They, they make all kinds of exceptions for Mumia. And then when other people are convicted or when other people are exonerated and they have precedent, I ain't gonna law school, but I know that word, uh, precedent, and they say that once there's a precedent, you have to follow the precedent. And they said that a white man who was part of an Aryan prison gang could not have his association used against him. And yet, Mumia had his former association with the Black Panther Party for self defense used against him. It's an exception that cannot hold. They said we got to use our brain. The law must be formed by something called the reasonable man standard. All of the window holes and one thing about white folk, black folk, though. What would a reasonable person believe under these circumstances? Would a reasonable person believe that a black man in 1981 who just shot somebody, who just shot a police officer, is sitting in a room of police officers and says, I shot the police officer and didn't nobody hear it? And then they write down the Negro did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. It's unreasonable. But when it comes to me, reason don't matter. They say, well, the police wouldn't lie to us. <laughs> right. Now, this is the Rizzo error. Some of y'all from Philly, most of y'all from Philly, y'all know the Rizzo era of Philadelphia. Wanting violence and cruelty, beating people to death. Rizzo said in public, Rizzo, one thing about Rizzo, he ain't lied to, he told you exactly who he was. He said, even if you're wrong, I'm going back you to a room full of police officers. They rolled through North Philly, they rolled through South Philly, beat my father almost within an inch of his life. They didn't charge him. But he wasn't alone, they did it to everybody. The FBI investigated the Rizzo administration and said their behavior in the Philadelphia Police Department shocks the conscience. The FBI said that. And they ain't got no conscience. So, this ain't old stuff, 1995. Six more officers planted court in Philadelphia planting evidence. Right. So while they're fighting for an appeal, defending the integrity of police, the police are getting caught planting evidence. That's why Brady is so important, not just to Mumia's case, but to the black community. Right. 
The state doesn't have a right to withhold evidence. The whole point of Brady is to say, if you got something that can get somebody free, you got to give it up. You got to share it. That includes witnesses who might be on the payroll. That includes people who might be snitches. That includes police officers who have a record, a documented record of lying under oath. The police can't keep putting the lying police officer on the stand and not tell you that he's been convicted or caught lying. They have to tell it to you because it's exculpatory. It gets you out of prison, it gets you off. Because a reasonable person would say that absent this evidence, I wouldn't have made the same decision. But what they did in the Romain case is they made sure y'all didn't see none of that. They didn't want you to hear about ballistic evidence. They didn't want to hear about guns that didn't match. They didn't want to hear about witnesses that didn't show up. They went on vacation at the time of the trial. Handwritten reports that ended up being typewritten even though they said it was handwritten. They didn't want you to hear none of that. But that's why we're here. Some of y'all from North Philly. Some of y'all from South Philly. Some of y'all from West Philly. I can tell you all y'all. Y'all all from the hood. And one thing we got in the hood is roaches. You know what roaches do? Whatever they want. When the lights is out. They eat your food. They go in your bag. They watch Netflix. They do whatever they got to do when the light is off. But when you put the light on, they run. They scatter. They become afraid. What this Philadelphia Police Department has done, what this prosecutor's office has done, has been in the dark. And what we do every single day, what Pam Africa has been doing, what Johanna is doing, what Mia has been doing, what everybody in this room has been doing, is putting a light on this system so that they can continue to operate with impunity in the dark. See, the state ain't got no feelings. The state doesn't have feelings, it only has interests. The state didn't just get religion and decide to give up some evidence. Just like the state didn't decide to take the mere off death row. They thought that if we took death off the table, we would stop fighting for his life. But we didn't. And now they said, we're tired of these appeals. We're tired of coming back. How do you think Mia feel? How do you think his children feel? How do you think his grandson feel? How do you think his activists feel? We'd love to not go back. If you don't want us to go back, then do the right thing, judge. Do the right thing, do the right thing, prosecutor. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. So they stumbled upon this evidence. Six boxes that just happens to corroborate the very things that we've been saying since day one. That a witness with 36 prior convictions, 38 arrests, excuse me, forgive me, who had three pending at the time, and suddenly they all went away. And then she went away. A questionable witness who may not even be there, asking for his money after he gave testimony that was questionable. Handwritten notes talking about how we're going to exclude jurors from the trial. Black jurors. A city of 40% black, and the jury pool ain't 40% black. One's 20%. We got a box of evidence that shows every single thing we've been talking about. And they're saying we don't know what to do. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the lights out. We're going to turn the lights up. We're going to make it so bright that they can't do the wrong thing. Lucretia Clemens, you ain't going to do the wrong thing this time. You are going to see this evidence. Y'all are going to tell the truth. And we're going to get the thing that we have been fighting for for 42 years. And that is justice. And justice is not slow death row. Justice is not a life sentence. Justice is bring Mumia home.